Good morning church. I want to greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in him. Christ is the center of our worship. And as we celebrate the mission of God especially during this month of November, I want to encourage each one of you to get engaged with God in fulfilling God's mission in our environment. We have been talking about the theme unleashed to fulfill God's mission. We are unleashed by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be involved in the mission of God. We can pray, we can partner and we can persevere in fulfilling the great commission. We spoke about partnership with Christ. It's God who is at work and he is calling us to join him in his mission. We talked about partnership in the gospel of Jesus Christ. How God has given us the ministry of reconciliation so that we can carry this life-giving gospel to the people that are in our environment. We also talked about partnership in giving. And this week we are going to talk about faith promise. is simply trusting God and releasing God's resources for the mission of God. It's nothing that I say I have this much of money I'm going to give. No. When God gives me the resources, I'm going to release it to the mission of God. I want us to focus on what Paul has written in Philippians chapter 4 verses 16 onwards. Let me read it for you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 16 For even when I was in Thessalonica you sent me aid again and again when I was in need not that I am looking for a gift but I am looking for what may be credited to your account I have received full payment and even more I am amply supplied your gift that you sent They are a fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. Friends, Paul is writing so beautifully. He says, "You send me aid again and again not because I asked. You sent it to support me in the mission of God and it is credited to you every time we release the resources. God has an account. and God keeps it on our credit but he also says your giving is an offering to God it's a sacrifice where God is pleased friends even as we pray and ask the lord to release his resources that we will give it to the mission of God with cheerful heart with generous giving we can please God the giving that you are going to offer it is a sacrifice and God is pleased with that i want to welcome you to this worship service where God empowers us and leashes to fulfill the mission of God let's join the worship team singing praises to God who sent his son for us so that we can have the relationship with him and let's worship god along with the worship team hello church a very warm welcome to all of you who have joined us for a morning worship service where christ is the center of our worship bible says in james 1:12 blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which god has promised to those who love him You know one of the greatest dangers that people in ministry pastors and all Christians are facing is about drying up and dying sometimes we lose interest sometimes we lose all hope being in the mission field or in the ministry but here's what god wants to remind you this morning when we endure and keep persevering there's a crown of life that's waiting for all of us 
so church let's not discouraged let's keep persevering and take part in the mission of god of what god called us to do You seem so far away a million miles or more it feels today And though I haven't lost my faith I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray But I don't know what to say I don't know where to start But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will sing yes I will pray Even in my darkest time Through the sorrow and the pain I will sing Your word is true I will sing Lord it's hard for me to see all the thoughts and plans you have for me yes, it is. but I will put my trust in you knowing that you died Set me free Oh, thank God you did But I don't know what to say And I don't know where to start But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will see I will pray Hebrews 10:36 When you have done the will of God you may receive what is promised
Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed His own blood for my soul. My soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, all oh, the bliss of this glory. Thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul and Lord haste the day when my faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul, it is well. My soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Our loving Heavenly Father, we want to praise and thank you for this morning. Thank you for the songs that minister to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for helping us to listen from your word about your missions that you are doing in our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will continue to work in our lives and help us to bring glory to your name alone. We bring glory to you and we want to praise you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Church, I trust God has already ministered to us through our worship even as we keep our eyes our ears our heart open to the word of god may we ask the lord to minister to us in a very special way we have dr gupta with us sharing god's word this week and it is a pleasure for us to have dr gupta to share with us on faith promise especially because you have given generously New Calvary Church, you excelled in your giving. 
that has helped the church to support more than 60 missionaries yes your giving has resulted in seeing thousands of people coming to know the lord jesus and churches were planted where there were no churches so as dr gupta comes and ministers god's word may we ask the lord to help us to release what he has given dr gupta good morning new calvary church what a joy it is for us to gather together in the midst of all of this rain and the floods things have happened that we never thought would actually happen but yet there is one truth in all of this that we can still worship the lord in spirit and in truth maybe many of you will not have come to church because of the rain and because of the floods and the struggles that you have faced however new calvary church is committed to bringing our message into the home so every member of new calvary church will actually be able to worship the lord it's been a long time since i have spoken with you and it's a great joy for me to be back in chennai it's been almost 2 months since i last shared the word of god but it's such a joy for me i bring greetings from lynette and our boys and maitrey and her husband and i trust all of you are doing well lynette and the family are well and we're glad that god has been protecting us and keeping us safe and well thank you for praying for us and i just want to say how thankful i am for every single one of you for all that you have done during the course of the lockdown and the virus and the many things that have happened during the course of the last 18 months many of us thought everything will fall apart and nothing will be able to move forward and many churches around the world thought their giving would absolutely come down and many would have to shut down but interestingly what god has proven around the world is the church has been faithful the church has been committed the church has not given up their responsibility to the task of fulfilling the mission of god so has new calvary church and i want to just commend you church for this awesome responsibility that you have taken to say that we at new calvary church regardless of what happens we're going to continue to support the ministry of our lord jesus christ the month of november traditionally for us is the month and we want to think about the mission of our lord jesus christ and i praise god for our teachers that have come before me and have laid an immense foundation to help us understand the marks of an incredible missional church the church at philippi is a missional church somewhat like new calvary church in many ways it was a, it's a praying church it's a giving church it's a partnering church it's a church that is engaged in declaring the knowledge of god it's a church that is confirming to the truth and in, you read through the book of philippians it's an amazing study how paul is trying to help the church understand nothing is done in isolation and independence but absolutely in interdependence and in partnership we've not only looked at that word prayer and paul shows us how he prays for the church at philippi and every missional individual has this in the heartbeat of their life that we will do the work of calling upon the lord and seeking the lord and paul clearly says every remembrance that i have of you i pray for you i pray for your faithfulness i pray for your commitment to the gospel of our lord jesus christ i pray that you will declare the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but not only does he talk about prayer but he also talks about the perseverance of every single person in the church so that the church will take responsibility not to throw in the towel and give up the early church was probably the most difficult times that the church ever experienced it was like birthing a baby it was like having the pains of a child a mother when a child is born it was like a time when 
the roots were beginning to take place and the church was being ch targeted and challenged and it was a time when the expansion beyond the Jewish community extended through the synagogues into the Gentile community through the God-fearers who showed up not only on the day of Pentecost but also had heard about the message of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and what God in Christ Jesus has been doing to the world, reconciling it and bringing them into an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. The Jews were not happy about it. There were many Gentiles, there were many atheists, there were many agnostics, there were many people who were humanistic. There were people of other religious faith that refused to accept the fact that Jesus Christ had broken into history, reconciled the world, now is with the Father, and has released the work of the Holy Spirit into the life of a believer so that we who are far away from God can have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul is writing to that church and telling them, guys, I want you to understand that you have a gospel that is no ordinary truth. It is the good news of the kingdom of God that is on earth and can become as in heaven. And it is so important for us to embrace the fact as a church that we don't just have a message of eternity, but we have a message that empowers us to have a relationship with Christ, to walk with him, to talk with him, to live the life that is empowered by the work of the Spirit of God so that we can be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an amazing message? And that's what Paul was writing to the church of Philippi. And he's saying, as Charles shared with us last week and Mal earlier, as she laid the foundation for the book of Philippians to understand the significance of a missional church that has a missional message that needs to pro proclaim to a world that is living in darkness so that they will experience the liberation from the power of darkness into the marvelous light. So ultimately, as Shal said, the glory of God will be revealed through our lives. And there will be no place that had never heard about the message of redemption. Church, God has given us a great responsibility. And when you look through the book of Philippians, that word, partnership is a very, very important word. We've talked about prayer, we've talked about perseverance, we've talked about proclamation, and we talked about partnership in the context of proclamation. This is the last of our Sundays for the mission month. And we want to talk about responding to the need of mission. The Apostle Paul in the fourth chapter if you look at Philippians, he actually addresses the fact that the church at Philippi, of all the churches he had ever been to and started, were the church that responded to his needs. They responded generously. They responded in ways that he did not even expect it. Even when the other churches did not respond, he said, y'all responded with great generosity. This week, we're going to talk about our responsibility as a missional church to get involved with the needs of the mission of God by becoming generous givers. When we study the Bible and we look at all of the Word of God, we come to realize God is the source of all of our resource. Who? God is the source of all our resource. In fact, Jesus says to us, you can't even add an inch, you can't add a hair to yourself, nor a breath to your life if it didn't come from God. Everything we have comes from God. And it's so important that as we begin to think about giving, we don't think about it in the perspective of a legalistic reality, but in the generous reality 
that everything belongs to God and comes from God. And when we put our arms around the concept of biblical giving, we begin to understand what Paul is talking about in this letter to the church at Philippi. The word partnership is used in many different ways in this letter. Sometimes he uses the word fellowship and the translators have chosen to use it as partnership. But if you read through the text, Paul is talking about working side by side, participating together. These are all concepts and ideas that are part of the realization that nobody does mission independent of each other. It is done in togetherness. In chapter 2, he gives us the example of the Godhead and in the Godhead, they together make a choice so that Jesus Christ becomes the redemptive sacrifice in order that the world may be reconciled. And Paul says, this very same mind that was in Christ Jesus needs to become our mind and we need to become united. We need to have singleness of mind, singleness of thought, oneness and unity in order to accomplish the mission of Christ. And it's so important to see what Paul is saying over there. And he's calling them to be partners in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and not to become an and island unto themselves, but to become the body of Christ interdependently working with one another in unity and in love for Christ. Knowing the message of the gospel, there is no other option. And he calls them to that reality. In chapter 3, he calls them to the fact that he suffers and is calling them and inviting them to suffer with him for the cause of the gospel because he says his suffering is for the furtherance of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then when you go into chapter 4, you see him talking about the significance of giving as part of a process of absolutely enabling the message of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, this is the last week, and we're going to focus in on giving as partnership in the mission of God. We have been unleashed with a purpose. We have been unleashed in order that we will pray for one another. We have been unleashed so that we can proclaim the message of the gospel. We have been unleashed so we can persevere to the end. We have been unleashed so we can partner together in the gospel. And how do we do this in mission and at New Calvary Church? For years together now, New Calvary Church has adopted a process that we call faith promise giving. When we think about how we do missions and understand the larger part of giving, we begin to realize that we do so not only with the resources that God expects us from our tithes or even from our thank offerings that we bring to the church, but he actually Paul is writing to the church at Corinth and he's saying to the church in Corinth, let me give you the example of the church of Macedonia. And he says, this church excels in their giving and I want you to excel also in your ability to fulfill the mission of God by becoming partners and giving for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say what Paul was saying to the church at Philippi is, you're a great church. You're a church that is generous in your giving and you helped me accomplish this. And church, I want to say that you are a giving church. You are a generous church. In the midst of lockdown, when everybody th thought things will fall apart, you gave generously. Many of you, by faith, trusted the Lord. And this year, again, we want you to prayerfully consider how you would be involved in giving to missions. Giving not out of what you have, but beyond your abilities. And I want you to turn in your Bible 
to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And I want you to look at the text carefully. Because Paul is writing to the church at Corinth and he's saying, my brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God had given the church in Macedonia. When you talk about faith promise giving, we're not merely talking about something that is within the scope of our ability, about our resources, but we're talking about a spiritual experience that we have in Christ Jesus, which is an act of grace. The word over there actually is charismata, which is actually the same word where God pours his spirit into us. And when he empowers us with his spirit, his spirit enables us to do that which we are not able to do. And that's exactly what he's saying over here. He's writing to the church at Corinth and saying, if you're going to make a difference and if you're going to accomplish the mission of God and if you're going to give for the mission of God, the spirit of God that is within you, that we've been talking about, that has unleashed you, has liberated you, will cause you not to think about all of your personal needs independent of the mission of God, but in the context of the mission of God, and you will become generous in your giving because you become conscious of the fact that the Spirit of God is working in you to actually accomplish the task of releasing resources because you have been unleashed for the kingdom of God. And this morning, I want you to realize that it is a spiritual experience when we give for the mission of God, when we bring our offerings to the altar, when we obey and give our tithes to the mission of God. And I want you to understand that if we are going to go beyond where we were last year in your giving, and if you're going to make the choice that I am going to excel in my giving, we must begin with the realization that it is an act of spirituality. And it's the proportion of our spirituality that is dynamically equivalent to how much we are going to release for the kingdom of God. The gospel is our responsibility. The empowerment of the gospel has been released to us in the person of Jesus Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit so that we can accomplish the impossible. He has released it to us not only to independently do it, to do it in partnership with one another. And every time we release resources to New Calvary Church to accomplish its mission, the church does incredible things. I wish you could only hear Brother Asir. And every week I get an email from him of the pastors that he has been talking to. New Calvary Church, you know how we release our resources? 100% of your faith promise offering goes to missions. Whether it is to support a missionary, to train a missionary, to enable a missionary, or to do the work of missions through the Church of Jesus Christ, and the members inside of our church who go for conferences, who teach and preach and accomplish the mission of God, 100% of your faith promise offering is going there. And I want to encourage all of you to think about the significance of that. We don't use it for the office. We don't pay anybody for that. We use it 100% and we ask ourselves, how can we actually utilize these resources so that these resources will proclaim and confirm the message of deliverance to the peoples of our nation. 50% of the rest of our giving also is given to missions. If you just put money in the offering plate and you don't designate it for faith promise, 50% of your giving goes to missions. Isn't that amazing? And I want to thank our church because you know what? Everybody uses their gifts. And we have teachers in our church, so we don't have to pay a senior pastor. We have teachers that are spending time, and they're studying the Word of God, and they teach. We have people who go and visit in homes, along with our teachers, in order that together we can do the work, and none of them are paid. 
Only our office staff who work on Monday through Saturday are given resources to support their families. The rest of us are bivocational servants of God. Just like the Apostle Paul who said, I and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, who administer the grace and mercy of God. He was a tent maker. And that's how the Bible looks at the responsibility of all of us in doing the mission of God. As a result, 100% of your giving to faith promise goes to supporting the mission of God. And I trust that you will put your arms around the fact that the church in Macedonia didn't give because of their capacity to give or their ability to give, but because they were internally moved by the Spirit of God to give, and they gave out of tremendous amount of grace that they saw from God. The second thing that we see in this text is that Paul is saying that the Macedonian church took responsibility to give generously for the ministry of God. So it is the church's responsibility. Very often, we try to let the parachurch do the work of the mission of God, and the church itself becomes less responsible for the mission. At New Calvary Church, we are committed to the church, we are committed to the missionaries, we are committed to people who are involved in multiplication of churches and preaching the gospel and equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry of God because it's the church's responsibility. And who is the church? We are the church of Jesus Christ. And so the Macedonian church, they gave generously because they realized this is my responsibility. And as we continue to understand that the giving and the partnership in giving, we realize that it is through the church because we are the church and we use the church as the process to accomplish the mission of God. Now there is a third thing that you see in this text that they gave out of their ability. Now, you and I are responsible to give our tithes. We also are responsible from time to time to bring a thank offering to God because of his goodness to us. But when we think about mission, we also say to ourselves, hey, God has blessed me. I am blessed beyond all measure. And because I am blessed beyond all measure, I not only can release my tithe, not only will I bring a thank offering, but I can do a faith promise offering towards the task of fulfilling the mission of God. So I take within what ability that I have because God has blessed me and blessed me beyond all measures. And when I look at the resources that I have in a given year, I look at it and I say, let it go to the task of fulfilling the mission of God. So they gave out of their ability but Paul says, in the midst of great challenges in their life, severe and extreme challenges, the church in Macedonia gave beyond their ability. And that's where the concept of true faith promise comes. They made a commitment to the Apostle Paul, and when they made that commitment, they didn't have the resources. So when you think about making a faith promises this week, or maybe in the next few weeks as you pray about it, it is important for you to say to yourself that I understand that the church in Macedonia that released resources came not only from their ability, but beyond their ability, beyond what they thought they could give from the resources that they had. They trusted the Lord and said, Lord, this year what I want to do is to give twice as much as I gave in Faith Promise. You know why? Last year, when I wrote it down, you provided the resources. I became the steward of that resources. I released it, and now I have affirmed, and you know that I will release what you give to me. 
So this year I'm going to fill out the faith promise card and my faith promise is going to be greater than it was last year because I'm going to give beyond my ability. And church, I want to encourage you to think about that. Every year I fill out that faith promise card and every time I look at the faith promise card, I say, well, last year I made a commitment for X number of rupees. This year I want to add Y to the X and increase its capacity. And every year I've increased it. God has allowed me to give more and more and more. And consequently, I've had the joy of forgiving lots of resources for the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you to think about it. Not about giving from what you have. Yes, you can make a commitment in the context of what you have. But I want you to expand that commitment to beyond your ability and allow God to work through you so that you understand that I am giving not because money belongs to me, but he is the source of my resource. I'm only a channel of blessing and I'm a steward of every resource that he releases to me. And you begin to give out of what you do not have. And all of a sudden you realize. Now we have a statement that we make in New Calvary Church. Whatever you put on your card, nobody will know about it. And if you don't even give it, nobody will know about it. Nor will you hear from us because you were not able to give. All we are asking you to do is to trust the Lord. I remember the story of my mom and dad traveling after they had just gotten married. My mom hadn't had the faintest idea what it means to live by faith. My dad had been thrown out of a family that didn't believe in Christianity. Consequently, they didn't support him. So from the day he left his house, he trusted explicitly and implicitly in Christ and Christ alone. It is amazing to have watched his life and watch him walk through that journey and see God provide for him. He had a chembu, he had his clothes he was wearing on, but he had his Bible. And the promise God gave him was, if God spared not his only begotten son, how shall he not with him also give you all things freely? So my dad knew God would provide everything. There was nothing that would hold him back. Here's the first journey my mom is making with my dad. On a revival meeting, they went and they preached and had a great response. And about halfway on the journey, my dad had to sell my mother. Honey, we got to get off of this train because I only had money to buy tickets to this point. And about that time, my mother cried loudly because he had only some small change. And he said to her, why don't you go get yourself some breakfast to eat? I'll move our stuff to the waiting room. My mother started to bawl out crying. Never experienced, she said to him, if you had only told me, I would have written to my father and my father would have sent the money and we would have been able to go all the way home. And then my dad said to her, every time I have a need, if I ask you, your father will also be with us sitting in the railway station because I have so many needs. But God supplies all my needs according to the riches that I have in Christ Jesus. Isn't that amazing? They're sitting there waiting my mom is getting over her emotions and an army official walks by. He recognizes my dad and says, you stayed in our home in Anantapur. I read your wedding invitation. I'm sorry I couldn't come. But I'm so glad that I saw you over here. And he said, my wife is also with me. Let me go bring her. So he goes and brings his wife. They sit down and they're talking and having a nice chat. My mother by that time forgot that she was sitting here without any money. And after they finished their chat, this army officer took some money out of his pocket, put it in an envelope and he said, we couldn't come to your wedding, but we want to give you this as a gift to you. Did that man know that my father and mother were stranded there without knowing how to go home? No, he didn't. But my father knew the source of all of his resource was God the Father. 
and that he can trust in the Lord and that the Lord will never let him down. And for the first time, my mother began to realize what it means to live by faith. I'm inviting you to become part of a faith promise commitment. But in order for you to become part of a faith promise commitment, it comes out of the realization that I have a relationship with God, I make God number one in my life, and I allow Him to choose me to be a channel through which He's going to do it. But I'm going to trust God to provide that resource because I don't have it. What I have, I release. But what I don't have, I trust the Lord. Faith promise is about giving from what you don't have more than what you have. And this morning I want you to think about that because you can give beyond your abilities if you say, I will trust in the Lord and I will choose to become the best steward so that God will always trust me and will always release resources to me to accomplish his mission. And you know what will happen? You will begin to become an incredible instrument of exceeding in your ability to give for the mission of God. I can tell you, I have had the joy of giving and releasing lots of resources for the mission of God. And it's such a great joy because you don't give grudgingly, you give out of great joy. Many, many years ago, the first time I had ever put, filled out one of these faith promise cards, I didn't know where it was going to come from. And I remember as I wrote that down that I was saying, Lord, unless you provide, it's not going to be possible for me to release this. And you know, I had a car in the United States and I was paying every month the payment for that car. And somebody had found out that I had that car and I was willing to sell that car. And so they called me and said, Bobby, would you be willing to let us buy your car from you? I said, for sure. I don't want to be paying and not using it. And if somebody else can use it, I'd like to release it. So for not making any other money from out of it, they took over the final payments that I had to make and they paid the car off. First of all, I made a savings from not having to pay every month. But what I didn't know was there was a rebate on that car. And all of a sudden, my son writes to me and he says, Dad, you got a check from the Ford Motor Company for the car that you owned, that you sold to your friend. And when I told me what it was, it was the exact amount of that faith promise. You know what God is? He is an awesome God. He'll never fail us. But you know, since that time, every year I write and increase my giving. And God has been faithful to give me more than I ever have received. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you trust the Lord and whether or not you make God number one. Now, if you read the text, it says that these believers surprised the Apostle Paul by making God number one in their life, but then pleaded to be part of what they were doing for fulfilling the mission of God. And when you think about faith promise giving, you have to realize it is a giving towards the mission of God. It is the privilege of joining the missionary on the mission field. It is the privilege of becoming God's instrument to serve the Lord in fulfilling his mission. And God takes your life and he allows you to become the instrument. This morning, we want to give you that opportunity to trust the Lord. If you've never done a faith promise card, I want to encourage you to take a step of faith. We're going to have a song that is going to be played. And whatever, the, when that song is being played, I want you to trust in the Lord. I want you to pray to the Lord. And then I want you to take a moment and I want you to send a note to Brother Asir and say, today I made a decision to pray faithfully for our missionaries to proclaim the gospel when God gives us the opportunity. 
but I also made a decision to partner with New Calvary Church. And I, by faith, am going to trust him to provide. And you put the amount down. And you text it to him. Or you send him an email. Or you call him and make a call. Or if you come to the church, I want you to take the Faith Promise card, fill it out, and hand it to one of us. And I would believe the proportion of your giving will be directly equivalent to what God is going to do through New Calvary Church in this coming year. If you say, I'm going to give what I gave last year, you're saying, I want to only give so that we don't add on and grow in the mission of God. But I want to say to you, church, because you generously gave, you know what God did? Almost every week, we are hearing from church planters from the mission field that we are supporting, that are baptizing people, 20 people a week, sometimes 10 people a week. But God has allowed us to see people come to know him and worship him. The same people that said, don't come to our village, went to the pastor's home. When they went to the pastor's home and they saw the love of Jesus Christ, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and experienced the transformation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they came to the pastors and they said, we want to be baptized. And today, because of lockdown, because of the virus, because everybody thought nothing could happen in the midst of this context, Every week we receive letters from pastors with pictures of people that have come. If you haven't seen the newsletter, we're going to make sure you can get a copy of this newsletter. But I want you to understand, your giving of faith, your generous giving, trusting the Lord, not out of what you have alone, but also from what you don't have, can make a difference in next year's people coming to the Lord. And you know what Malini said? It'll be added to your credit when God maintains it and you enter into his presence. He's going to say to you, thou good and faithful servant, because you trusted him. And you not only prayed, you not only proclaimed, you not only persevered, but you partnered jointly to fulfill the mission of God. And this morning, I want to encourage you to just pray and trust God and fill out your commitment to faith promise this year. And God will be glorified through our lives. Amen? Will you pray with me as we prepare our hearts to understand how can I be part of this year's faith promise giving? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the church at Macedonia. We thank you for the church at Philippi. We thank you, Father, for the life of the Apostle Paul and Timothy, all who demonstrated that partnership is the bright product of our personal relationship with you. When we come to know you and worship you, you put into our heart the realization, what I can do by myself is not as great as what I can do with others. And the synergy is so much greater, oh God, that it's so much better for me to serve in partnership. Father, this year we've been looking through the book of Philippians and looking at what Paul is saying to the church at Philippi and calling them to be partners with him and praising God for their willingness to partner with him so that he together with them can accomplish the impossible. Father, I pray that you'd help all of us who have our eyes closed and our heads bowed to consider this morning, Lord, how would you have me fill out my faith promise card? What I filled out last year or increase it because I saw you work in a miraculous way? How you provided through my business and through the sales in my company? Lord, I'm going to trust you again. You gave not out of what I had, but beyond my abilities. And Lord, I was able to be part of the many people that came to know you 
through the investment of New Calvary Church. I thank you, Father, for the privilege and the opportunity that New Calvary Church has to carry out your mission. I pray, Lord, that everyone in our church will fill out that card and everyone will make a commitment and everyone will experience your grace and give not only out of their own abundance but beyond their ability so that your mission can be fulfilled. Father, we ask this all for your glory and for your honor and all of God's people said, Amen. While the music is playing and the words of this song touches your heart, will you fill that card out? Will you call Asir? Will you text him? Will you send him an email? If you haven't yet prayed about it, will you take time to pray and ask God, God, how would you use me to be part of your mission and become missional like the church at Philippi? Father, I thank you for every single person that is filling out their faith promise card and filling it out to accomplish the things that you want us to do at New Calvary Church. Lord Jesus, I pray that your hand will be upon us and that you would bless us. Pray, O oh God, this mission month has motivated us to realize missional community is committed to praying for one another. Missional community is committed to proclaiming the word. Missional community has been unleashed to fulfill the mission of God to go into all the world and reach all peoples. Missional community of God partner with one another to do the impossible 
because greater things can be done in fulfilling your mission. Father, I pray our church this year will see a phenomenal impact upon what you are doing to accomplish your mission. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the continuing, energizing, empowering presence be with each and every one of you now until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. May his countenance shine upon you. And may your faith in him not be forgotten through the course of 2022. So the resources God brings to you will be released for the purpose of his mission. Remember, we are unleashed to pray, to proclaim, to partner, and to persevere. God bless you all. Amen.